What's up YouTube? Today we're talking about rendering fire and smoke in DaVinci Resolve 16. You could go and use Blender, a 3D animation software to create fire and smoke using Mantaflow. However, that does take a long time to bake the animation, sometimes even a day to get good results. The next way to do it would be to go download some stock footage of a fire with some smoke and then just composite that on top of your image. But that's kind of the easy way out. So I thought to myself, can we use only DaVinci Resolve 16 to make fire and smoke using only the Fusion tab? So this is what I came up with. It did take me quite a long time to figure out how this works, and this is probably the best I could get it. So have a look at the results, and then I'll show you the tutorial in DaVinci Resolve 16. So remember, this is only using the Fusion tab, and it's not the most high-res fire in the world, but considering it doesn't take a day to bake, and once you know how to do it, it only takes you about an hour or so to create it. The other version I tried to make didn't come out too bad, however this wasn't using the OpenGL renderer so the transparency is not that accurate. But let's go to the tutorial. So in DaVinci Resolve 16 I've got this clip of myself doing some strange movements and I'm going to go into the Fusion tab and I'm going to disconnect the Media in 1 from the Media in Out. This is because we'll use the Media in 1 later. Press Shift Spacebar and add a P emitter node. This is where our particles are going to originate from. Press shift spacebar and add a P render node. This is a way to render a 2D or 3D image in a virtual environment. The next thing we need to do is press shift spacebar and add a merge 3D node. This will basically allow us to connect other 3D objects later. We still need a way to render our particles in a 2D environment, so press shift spacebar and add a renderer 3D. This allows us to convert a 3D scene into a 2D scene so we can connect it to our media out. And hey, look at that, we have some particles, but they're really ugly. Now the Merge 3D object actually allows us to connect multiple 3D objects in our scene, so we'd like to add a 3D camera. So let's press Shift Spacebar and add a 3D camera, which gets connected to our Merge 3D using that green little input triangle. And we can now right-click that little grey box and drop it in the middle of the camera 3D, at which point we will be able to choose Image Input. And notice that the plane on the back of the camera has actually changed. This is our original image. However, there's no particle systems, and that's because we have to move the camera back slightly. You can actually click the camera itself and go to the fifth icon at the top, which shows you the X, Y, and Z translation, or you can drag the camera in 3D view. In our case, we're pretty happy with it being about 0.8, which makes the particle system look about the right size. Notice the playback on my screen is a little slow. We can actually fix this by clicking the Renderer 3D and changing the render type to OpenGL. This will be quicker. We can also change the transparency sorting option to sorted accurate. This is slower, however transparent objects will look much more accurate. Now if we click on our P emitter node and we go to the emitter, we can start setting some of these settings. If we set the number to 33 and the number variance to 11, we can set the lifespan to roughly 213, which is how long they'll be alive. We also need to go to the style tab and change the style to blob. This will be a horrible looking blob, but it's just for illustration purposes. On the fourth tab, you'll see a region tab. Make sure you change that to mesh. This has allowed us to get this little yellow input. And we need to connect something to that input, which is a shape 3D. This will allow us to shape the actual particle system. So drag the output to the middle of the emitter. And if we click the shape 3D, we can change the shape to cone, for example. As you can see, a cone appears on the screen, but it's huge. We can fix this by clicking the shape and actually going to the radius properties and trying to drag that radius down to roughly, let's say, 0.1. We can also change the height of the particular scene. And you can see in our 3D scene, the height of the cone will come down. There's a few options to make this particle system smaller. We could drag the camera backwards, or we could select the shape 3D itself and actually just adjust the translations on the third icon at the top. This means we can translate that up or down, left, and on the z-axis, which would make it smaller. But we can also go to the camera and move the camera backwards. If we click the shape again and go to the translate option at the top, we can move it left and right just to hover it above the hand. Let's go back to the particle emitter system. We'd actually like to change the original style, which is blob, to something called a bitmap. As soon as you click bitmap, the particle system will disappear. This is because the style bitmap is not filled in. So we actually need to create the style bitmap. To do this, we need three nodes. Press shift spacebar and add something called a fast noise node. We need to connect that to something called a brightness contrast node. So we'll just connect those two up from the in and the outputs. Now we just need to add an ellipse from the menu. 
and drag that into the blue triangle on the brightness. If we examine the fast noise, we see the actual file is huge. We can make it smaller by clicking the fast noise, going to the third tab, unchecking auto resolution, and making the width and height 255. That makes a lot smaller of a noise particle which we'll use for our fire. Now click the color tab at the top and change the type to gradient and the gradient type to radial. This will allow us to set the noise size. We'd like to start in the middle, so start point is 0.5. You'll see it starts in the middle. We'd also like the Y to stay at 0.5. We'll put the end at about 0.9, and then we'll put the Y at about 0.4. We also need to click the gradient color at the top left and actually change it to about a middle gray with the alpha set to one. Now click the second gray and set that to black with the alpha set to zero. This gives us a little noise particle that we'll use for the fire. This particle also allows us to change the detail up to about 7.4. I'll make the contrast slightly lower and the brightness slightly lower as well. The scale is quite important. It just controls the size of the individual flame and the seed rate can be increased to 0.3. This means that if you play it through, it'll actually move and that's the seed rate. It'll make it look like the flames are actually moving. Now that we've created the style template for our flames, we can just attach it to the emitter. We're not actually done yet. We need to click the particle emitter and make sure we change the animate to particle age. This will mean it'll use the fast noise seethe rate that we set earlier to change those particles frame by frame and allow them to age over time. We also can click the color and give it a default orange flame and set the alpha to quite a low value. I know it doesn't look like much now, but we're still gonna work on this and try and make it look like fire. We can also go into the color variance option and change the alpha variance down and the higher value make that a lot higher than zero as well. This will give us a variance of transparency. Let's go down to the color over life, which will allow the particle to change color over its lifetime. If we add four different points and just start giving some random orange colors, as well as dropping the alpha slightly to give it a little bit of transparency, we then carry on clicking all those little gradient items at the top and giving them different values of alpha transparency and different blends of red, orange, and yellow. This is to try and make our fire look as realistic as possible. At this point, it's really up to personal taste and deciding what alpha values and fire colors you wanna use in your flames. We will come back to the screen just now, but this is just a starting point for our fire. Now we move on to the size control dropdown. I'm gonna increase the size to roughly 0.2, let's try 0.24. The size variance, I'm gonna leave at about 0.03, and the size to velocity, I'm gonna decrease. That just means the bigger flames move faster. Right now, I'm also gonna adjust the size over time by adding four different points on this graph. This just means the fire will start small, it'll get a little bit bigger, and then the flames will sort of grow smaller, and then go back a little bit larger on the top again. Again, this is personal preference. We can also fade in the particle's visibility for the first 10% of its life and disappear for the last 10% of its life using the fade out. Now we can click on the particle emitter and actually add a P turbulence. This gives some unsteady movement to the X, Y or the Z axis of the flame. We need to control this flame a little better. So let's click the P turbulence, press shift spacebar and add a P directional force. The P directional force can be set to direction 90 and change the strength until you actually see the flame. The last two nodes have added some environmental physics to our flame. What we need to do now is click the shape 3D and just decrease the Y value until it comes up over our hand. We can also then select the camera 3D and adjust the Z axis which comes directly out the camera. Decreasing that will make your flame smaller. Click on the P emitter and start messing around with your color until you're happy with the overall variance the alpha transparency, as well as the different colors over the lifetime of the flame. It's important to note that all these settings work together to give you the most natural looking fire. It takes a lot of tweaking and trial and error before you even get something that remotely looks like fire. Getting the fire to look natural requires balance between at least six of the different nodes, including the shape, the emitter, the style, the size, the color, as well as the shape of the noise and the detail in all your noise patterns. Messing up one thing can mess up your fire, so I suggest you save often. However, I'm pretty happy with this. It looks kind of violent, and over time it does actually die, which I kind of like. 
For example, just changing the X strength on the turbulence itself gives you a much narrower fire and it does start looking more natural and moving in the right direction. Now we need to add some smoke. If we notice that all those nodes up to the render node actually created fire, all we need to do is copy paste those nodes and reconnect those render nodes to the merge 3D we created earlier. Now we have a double fire. We have two fires, so we actually need to click the P emitter, go to the third option and change the color to a flat gray. This will be the base color of our smoke. I'm going to increase the alpha slightly because I want my smoke to be a little less transparent. Now I click the shape 3D and change it to a cylinder, although this is personal preference. You can see the cylinder takes its default properties, which means we need to change it to around 0.2 and also mess around with the height. Viewing the merge 3D in our viewer allows us to see the size of our flame. Right click and choose left, right or top. We can also right click and choose transparency, full sort. Choose the particle emitter, go to the third style tab and start messing around with your colors. The original gray color is our base color of the smoke. Let's go lower down to the color over life controls. We start messing around with the gradient from left to right, maybe making it a darker color and increase the alpha transparency, which will give you a darker color smoke. This is all up to personal preference as some people might want a lighter color and others might want more of a mist like color. The color over life controls basically dictates what the flame will look like over its lifespan, starting from the left and moving all the way to the right. Then I'm going to click the shape 3D and start changing the size of the cylinder that the smoke actually sits in. Again, this is quite a lot of trial and error and the smoke can actually be affected by so many different factors within your node tree, including the fast noise, the ellipse, the brightness, the turbulence, the directional force, the shape and lifetime of your particles, as well as when they fade in and out. Right now I'm adjusting the detail of the fast node as well as the seeth rate increasing it to 0.7. This will give the smoke a more vigorous appearance over its lifetime. Again, changing things like the contrast, the brightness, the scale, the angle, the seeth rate all has an effect on how your smoke looks. I would love to see someone be able to recreate the smoke that we get in Mantaflow in Blender. So if you do, please leave a comment and I'd love to check your videos out. I did actually forget to set the gain a little bit lower on the brightness and contrast node, which actually gives your fire and smoke a little bit more detail and fullness in its appearance. I also adjusted the brightness and contrast for each individual smoke puff, I guess you could call it. If I adjust the width and height of the ellipse item a little bit smaller and actually drag it to a new location, it'll only target that specific area and just create some highlights or lowlights, depending on what setting. I think the fire came out nice and the transparency option on OpenGL blends the fire quite nicely. I'm just adjusting the radius of the smoke to make it look like it interacts and is created from the fire. So if anyone has any more suggestions how to use fusion to make fire, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to read them and watch your videos. And again, this is the first version we just made. I tried a few different versions. This was another version I tried to make the smoke. This was the first version I ever created which wasn't using the OpenGL blend option. This was another thing that I was messing around with. So I think this was still the best one. Please if you enjoyed this content please hit that subscribe button and see you again next time.